With these three easy to make fixtures and a good quality dial indicator, I'll show how you can align the blade, the slot, and the fence with great precision. This is a piece of phenolic or Bakelite. It's one half inch thick and I was able to buy a piece six inch by 12 inch from Amazon for $20. And using the bandsaw, I cut out of that this arm with a 5 8 inch hole drilled in it. First thing to do is turn the power off, unplug the saw, remove the blade. I ground a couple of notches in here with a Dremel tool. That's not necessary, but what it allowed me to do is swing this arm right down to the tabletop. I attached the arm to the arbor in the same way as a blade with both flanges. In order to check the accuracy, we have to have repeatability. So I made this sliding thing with a tight fitting runner that doesn't have any wiggle. I'll zoom in on the dial indicator here. Even if I push this sled back and forth, I'm moving just a fraction of one thousandths of an inch and then it returns to the same spot. If I tap this arm here, it returns to the same setting. So little things like that aren't going to throw me off. Another thing to check for is at the extremes of the position of the carriage moving up or down to see whether there's distortion. And so I'll demonstrate that here. And as I approach the top, we'll move by 12 thousandths of an inch. I'm, I'm going to back off one half a turn. Maybe a full turn to really feel good about it. And then I can continue down several turns and nothing's happening. I'll demonstrate that by coming up. So here's one turn, two turn, three turn, the dial's not moving, four turn, and then that last turn is the one you don't want. So I'll stay out of that region. Another way to improve repeatability is to always measure at the same point on this arm. So I'm going to put a little a little black dot there. Doing the same uh, test, raising the carriage to its limit at the other end, I get the same effect but only three thousandths of an inch distortion. So it's not even a consistent distortion of the carriage as it reaches its maximum. It's somehow twisting. So some more tests for repeatability are I'll set it to zero and can I come back to that zero after I've made movements. So for example, move the arm, move it back, I still hit zero. Slide the tray down, slide it back to the dot, I still hit zero, that's very good. If you've decided to go with these notches, then be sure to move the arm away from that part there when you're raising and lowering the carriage. Otherwise, it'll catch and bend this piece of metal. I speak from experience. Now, I'll lower the carriage and raise it up. Back off my turn. And I've moved by two one thousandths of an inch. I think I'll just run through that again and see what it does. and the dial moved by one one thousandths of an inch. So that's probably the limit of my repeatability. The first test I'll do is alignment with the blade at 90 degrees and at maximum height or within one turn of maximum height. And for 90 degrees, you don't want to jam the, the handle up here because again, that can distort the, the carriage. You just want to come in gently. I got the point on the black dot. I'll set the dial to zero. Find that black dot spot again. There I can see that I moved six thousandths of an inch. So the misalignment from one end to the other end is six thousandths of an inch. The way that a saw is aligned is different for every manufacturer and every model of saw. So I'm not going to go into all those details. You'd have to check your instruction manual. Uh, and before I do this alignment correction, I checked several times because I don't want to be misled by a single measurement. I checked several times and saw that I consistently got five to six thousandths of an inch deviation from one end to the other. So I'll just try bringing that in line. On this machine you undo four bolts underneath 
and then turn these set screws and there I can see I'm bringing it in and I'm going to go a little beyond because the pivot point is up at the front end of the saw. Now with the bolts still not tightened I'll repeat that test being careful not to move the table. I'm one thousandths of an inch out so I think I'll leave that and if that wasn't right I would just do another adjustment. So now I'll tighten up the bolts and I'll check again to make sure I haven't jiggled it as I tighten the bolts. Okay, the bolts are tightened. I'll repeat the test. Well, very close to zero. I think anything within plus or minus two thousandths of an inch would be a reasonable expectation. By using this arm instead of a blade, I'm getting a range of almost 18 inches there. Whereas measuring off a blade, you'd be lucky to get nine inches of range. So you're getting twice as much range there that's making the measured error twice as big. So that's something to keep in mind. That's good because you get a good indication of the error, but don't hold yourself to such a high standard. The next alignment is with the carriage still at 90 degrees, but at the bottom. And I'll do the same check to see whether there's distortion at the bottom. Looks like there's not, just the sort of play as the hand wheel is turned back and forth. And I'll check this end. Same thing. So it looks like I can go right to the bottom. I don't need to back off half a turn. But I won't jam into the bottom. I'll just come in gently. Okay, so I set that to zero. I'm on the black dot. Within one one thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to leave that. This saw actually has a separate adjustment for alignment with lower height. Even if your saw does not have separate adjustments for that, it's worth doing the measurement because you want to know maybe you got your blade aligned at maximum height but it's not aligned at minimum height. And so then you might want to split the difference and have it aligned at halfway height. This measurement with the carriage at the minimum height is another situation where the arm is a great advantage over the blade because the blade would be below the table and you would not be able to measure it with a standard dial indicator. You'd have to buy a special vertical dial indicator. The next test will be with the blade at 45 degrees. And once again, I won't slam in hard to the limit. I'll just kind of be there gently. Turn the sled around. And I can hit the same black dot. Okay, blade at 45 degrees, pointer on the black dot, set the dial to zero. And I'm off by five one thousandths of an inch. This saw does have an adjustment for the 45 degree alignment, but it's the most complex adjustment to do. It happens the blade is, is kind of like this way, down more at this end than here. I would typically be cutting with a piece of wood this way. That would mean the blade would be hitting it like this, which is actually not bad. It's better than it being this way, where you'd then definitely get burning as you came up. Before aligning the fence, check to make sure the face of it is square with the table. And if not, then adjust the fence. The next step is to align the fence. You might think, well, we're all set up here. Just move the fence up against the dial indicator. Slide this along and make the adjustments till it's aligned. However, there's two downsides with that. One is that a fence is never a perfect plane. There's going to be a few thousandths of waviness here. And you don't really care about that because as a piece of wood is sliding along, it just slides over those that waviness. The second thing is, even though we've aligned the blade to the slot, going from the slot to the fence, that just introduces another source of error. So the direct way would be fence to blade or arm. So here's a better way to do it. Blade at 90 degrees on the black dot. Clamping to the fence as a, another way of getting consistency. Got that zeroed. And there I've got one and a half thou. So also thing to remember is that's over a span of 18 inches. Over a span of 9 inches, which is about the maximum amount of the blade that can stick above the table, it would be half of that. The way I figured out the dimensions for these jigs is I made prototypes out of MDF and the same here and held the dial gauge in place and then just kept cutting and fitting until I got it right. And you'll need to do that because every saw is going to be different. An easy and effective way 
of checking that the blade is perpendicular to the table is to cut a board in half and you need a board where the edges here are parallel. I've got the saw blade at maximum height minus one turn back in order to avoid that distortion I mentioned earlier and I'm going to mark the edges here so that I have reference. Now I can place the board against a straight edge and obviously it's going to be a perfect fit because the lines are the same but if I flip one board over that's the real test is it still a perfect fit and this looks good. You can also then push these two boards together and see if it comes up to the fence. If it doesn't come out perfect then you adjust your 90 degree stop limit on the saw. And the final check is the 45 degree stop. I got my pencil lines so I'll add them now. Then cut one of those pieces the other way. So there's my two pencil marks. Flip one of them over and they come together pretty good. Could look at the other side where there's no burr. Not quite perfect. See that? My 45 degree stop is not quite perfect. If I want it perfect I can adjust that.